But one of the things that's important that we need to remember is that everybody has an important role to play in church. Like church is really, really, really important. And we're going to get into that here. Like a lot of the sermons going to be focusing on that. But imagine, like we're doing a lot of really good things right now. And, and I'm super happy with the way our church is going. I think we're, we're strengthening more and more. I think our, our bonds and our relationships are getting tighter within the church overall, that, that people are coming closer together and feel more like family just, just continually, right? Uh, I hope that you feel the same way. That's the way that I feel about our church. But how much more could we be doing with an extra 25 people in the congregation just in general regularly helping out serving working and doing things and this is how i look at things right i look at like man if we just had everybody here and we had everyone here attending regularly like how much more could we be doing because i always want to be doing more that's why we do the challenges that's why we do everything we do like we want to do more we want to we want to get as much done as we can we have a short time in this life let's get things done together let's let's pull things together let's keep the focus and with church it's so important that you can prioritize things in your life where you say, you know what, I am going to do this all the time. There's some things that are important enough in your life, especially spiritually, in your spiritual life, that you ought to just make it solid, firm in your life that says, you know what, we don't really budge on this. This isn't optional. Things like reading your Bible every day should not be optional. Now look, it is optional for you, right? Like it's you do what you want to do. I'm not saying like, like any one of these things. I'm not, it's not a matter of like, well, is this a sin? Is it, you know, that is not what my sermon's about right now at all. It's not about the difference between am I sinning or not. Because we're not, we're not trying to hold the lowest standard possible. And I know the heart and the spirit of the people who do come to our church. And that's one of the things I love about our church is that, is that people love the Lord here. And I can say that, that genuinely people honestly, I think, love the Lord here and, and really do want to do their best to serve God. And it's not like many other places I've seen just in general or been to where it just seems real superficial, right? Where people just kind of show up, okay, we're going to do the church thing, and then that's it. It's not really part of their life. But this church is different because it is a part of our life. And the thing that's going to help you to stay in it for the long haul is to make the decision that says, I am going to be there. Now, there's nothing in the Bible that says you have to come to church three times a week. Those are the services that we have. But the Bible does say that we ought to be congregating together and that we need it more, so much the more as we see the day approaching. Like as the times get darker and it gets closer to the end, that we do need each other. We need the church together so much the more. And it is really important. We have examples here in the scripture of what happens when people even just start to backslide a little bit. And when you're missing out, John chapter 20, uh, this famous portion of, of doubting Thomas, right? We know a story of doubting Thomas. Well, Thomas misses out. And, and here's the thing. When you miss out on church services, you don't know what you're missing. Oftentimes, you have no idea what you might be missing out on. It, it could be life-changing for you to be in church. You might need to hear something. God might be preparing something for you to hear. But, oh, wait, you're not there. And the perfect example of this is what happens with Thomas. And it impacts him, too. Because everyone else is telling, oh, man, Thomas, you weren't here, but here's what happened. He's like, I don't believe you. I don't even believe it. You weren't there. 